camera angle right, that's a bit better. So, welcome to a uh, No Tanks live stream. Uh, tonight it's from uh, from the van, because I'm in Colchester to run the pool session in Colchester tonight. So, let me see if I can get the, the comments up. Do -do. Okay, so, uh, yeah, there should be some chats coming up. So, um, good news uh, on FreeFest is going ahead, and um, that's on the 17th of July. It's definitely going ahead. We've got just confirmed um, the accommodation uh, or the campsite, as it is otherwise known. Um, and we have a marquee coming, etc., etc. So it's all go for FreeFest. Um, tonight. Um, is an interesting live stream uh, because I didn't think it existed. So um, last week I was doing a one-to-one -one, uh, with one of our members, Tristan. So a big shout out to Tristan. And he said, I want to learn the hand signals. And I said, well, there are no hand signals. Uh, I mean, there's some obvious ones which he already knew. Um, but all the hand signals he said i want to learn all the hand signals so i said well there's apart from the two or three you know there's there's there isn't any and then he started describing some of the hand signals that uh, he'd seen us using as seniors and it got me thinking actually there are quite a few hand signals that we take for granted as seniors um when we're organizing trips and we're organizing dives and actually there are quite a few um so, and there's also some, um, how can I put it, signals that definitely shouldn't be used. And maybe from a safety point of view, these are as important as the um, signals that we kind of are using. So, I'm going to break them up into uh, ship and shore, uh, diver to your safety, uh, non-verbal communications, senior um, diver communication and then just some fun ones that you can go away and learn okay so to start with um, ship to shore there are three um, ship or shore so that's when you're in the water and you're communicating to a ship um, or to the shore um, and and vice versa so they're very simple and um, so the first is uh, we are okay so um, let me just prop that up so you can actually keep. So uh, we are okay, standard scuba sign. It's actually both hands, big O for we are okay. If you've only got one hand, uh, this. And it's a question and an answer. So are you okay? And then the people in the water say, yes, we're okay. Or if you're in the water and you look into the shore and you say, we are okay. And they say, good, we get the signal. You're okay. You get the message. Um, the only other... Uh, no, sorry, so that's that's a ship to shore, I am okay, or we're okay, question, or are you okay. Then we have this, which is end dive. So if the shore is telling the divers, okay, end dive now, um, usually you're too far away to uh, communicate any sort of information, but realistically, it's, it's irrelevant why you're stopping a dive, we're stopping the dive. So that's the divers telling shore, we're stopping the dive, come and pick us up. Or, um, you know, uh, the shore saying to the divers, you're out of time, or, or something's happened, stop the dive. Uh, you can also use your fins if you want to hold them above your head. Um, so if you're trying to communicate to get your boat to pick you up, you can say the dive's finished by crossing your fins above your head. Okay. Um, and the, um, so that's, Again, there's no there's no need for any extra information. You're just saying that the dive's finished. The only other one is distress call, which is uh, waving. So um, you don't wave unless you're in distress. When you uh, wave your hand, uh, or, or both hands, whichever, this is distress, come rescue us now. Okay. So, um, so that's it. That's how you communicate over long distances. Obviously, you can use this if you're two diving groups in the water and you're too far away to you know, use verbal communication. 
uh, but usually this is from the free divers to the shore and the shore to the free divers. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, you've got to keep it simple. Um, you don't want to have any uh, area for um, you know, miscommunication. That's why there's only three. Are you okay? Yes, we're okay. Um, stop the dive um, or you know, uh, distress. Okay, so that's, um, that's ship or shore. Next up we have uh, diver to the safety diver. Now, this is quite interesting. There are no signals that should be used between the diver and the safety during a dive. There are no signals. Two reasons why. One, from a safety diver's point of view, the safety diver, their sole purpose is to be watching the diver. That's their only purpose. So they're watching the diver and the diver's either fine or not fine. Um, and, and that's it. There is, there's no, there's no other ambiguity. So if you're in any doubt at all, uh, as a, as a safety diver, looking at a diver, whether it's um, them just, you know, taking a photograph or just snorkeling or in competition, uh, you're looking at a diver and you can tell there's something wrong, you help them. That's it. Black and white. Um, so from the safety type, safety diver's point of view, the only reason they're there is to watch you uh, or watch the diver and, and make sure they're okay. So if they're tangled up, you can see they're tangled, so you can go and help them. Or if they're in distress, you go and help them. So it's either they're calm, cool, calm, collected, doing the dive, or they're not. Right. If you wait for a, a diver to make a signal, it's probably too late. So, I mean, if you've got rope and they're pulling up the rope and they're meant to be thinning up, then there's something wrong. You don't need them to say, help, there's, or whatever signal that they, you've, you've made up. There's no, just, you don't need the signal. Okay. Um, yeah. From a free diver's point of view, you should have your eyes, especially on the ascent, which is where the safety is, is probably going to be, um, you have your eyes closed because you can't relax with your eyes open. So you have your eyes closed and you crack them open. You see your safety diver. That is the information you need. You need the information that the safety diver is watching you. Now, after that, you close your eyes again, knowing the safety diver's there. As soon as you start making signs or smiling or doing something silly, um, you're wasting energy, number one, by and hydrodynamics. You know, you're nice and hydrodynamic and you, you make an okay sign. It's going to make the dive a little bit difficult, more difficult. But the brain process of thinking, oh, shall I make a sign? And then you make a sign and wait for, this, for the, free, the, 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 the diver to, to respond is burning up oxygen in the brain, which you don't want to do. Okay? Remember, saying I'm okay to the safety diver is bloody obvious they're your safety diver they're watching you they know you're okay so why tell them you're okay they know you're okay they're, they're watching you so making an okay sign is uh, a waste of your energy and a waste of your brain power okay obviously if you need a hand you put out a hand you grab the, the diver you, you need a hand like but they will know that because they can see you so there's no there's no need to, to make the okay sound when you're underwater okay um, to your safety diver because that's what the safety diver is there for okay there are times when there's non-verbal communication between uh, we call it, we overridingly call it non-verbal communication. Of course, if you're underwater, it's always non-verbal because, you know, that's not true, actually. That's not true. Um, you can uh, verbally uh, um, communicate with other people underwater. 
but we call it non-verbal communication as a as a uh, over a bigger kind of name um and these things are going to be look over there okay um or come here or go up or go down pretty much that's it now anything else uh, information wise you can probably tell the your buddy because it's not going to be your safety diver because you know, your, your your buddy when you're on the surface unlike scuba where there's a whole set of instructions that you need to pass across because you can't just come up and chat whereas from free diving you can um so realistically you get your buddy's attention and you say look over there or come here uh, and usually because you, know, you found a fish and come here look there's a frogfish yeah. um, or um, go up go down I don't know when you might say go down I suppose if you're doing a swim through and there's kind of some sort of thing that might get in their way and you tell them go down but usually it'll just be up and this will usually be like something's changed, something's happened, and go up. Other than that, dive should be uh, following the dive plan. So you both know what the dive was meant to do, um, and, and it's, it's unlikely that uh, both of you are going to be, two people are going to be down, unless you're in a teacher-student scenario, that's, that's quite common, or that you're doing something very specific. In which case you've got other safeties around. So you're, you're doing something that's very specific. And there must have been a plan. Because if there's two people underwater. There's at the barest minimum one safety. But should be two safeties. So that involve, involves four people. So there should really be some sort of plan. So all four people know what's going on. Right. So underwater. Very few signs that you're going to make. Um. We might talk. Uh, well, no, I will talk about some some fun ones later on. But realistically, um, come here, go up, go down, look here. That's it. Okay. Um, on the surface, however, there's uh, non-verbal communication. Oh, by the way, yeah, <laughs> underwater still. And I said non-verbal underwater. You can make noise. <laughs> yeah. With a so, rather than the, the first one I did was more of a with no sharp edges to the sound, but <laughs> travels very well underwater. Another one you can do is if you hit your fist to your hand, it gives a loud click. Okay, um, and I mean that's non-verbal, but the, the first one is using so and underwater that sounds like click click click. Really, really quite good. Um, or you know, making noise, and that's to get the attention of somebody underwater, and you, you know, you can you can see how that can can be useful. Usually followed by "come up" or "look over there." Uh, dolphins. Okay, so that's how you get the attention, and then you speak. But on the surface, um, and these were the ones that Tristan was asking about. Um, uh, in fact, no, he was asking about senior ones, but on the surface there are uh, quite a few um, uh, things we can we can communicate. Most of the time it, we can talk. So most of the time there's there's verbal communication. If you're, for instance, in a in a cave freediving scenario, there the communications gets a little bit more complicated, but those communications are very specific for that very specific situation. But the most powerful Non-verbal communication we can have is trying to tell the people around you, I am about to dive. Now, I have seen people just simply, uh, when they're holding on a line, uh, I've seen people teaching that you're holding a line and you just before you dive, you say, I'm about to dive, um, which is perfectly legitimate. Um, but I do feel it slightly breaks your focus and concentration. So if you're uh, in, a, in a good good meditative state before a dive, you've breathed up, you don't necessarily want to kind of open your eyes and say, I'm about to dive. So uh, we at No Tanks use um, candle blows, which we did. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about just before every single dive. Uh, so it sounds like this. 
three deep breaths. It also clears out lungs, etc. But it is announcing to everybody around me, I am about to dive. And of course, if there's somebody around you that thinks, actually, this isn't the time to dive. You know, you've got five seconds. You can, whoa, stop. There's, there's a, a boat coming or there's somebody already on the line or whatever the reason is. Um, but uh, you'll see um, if you ever ever get to jump in a lake with us where you've got three or four instructors uh, and a whole bunch of, of uh, club members and a few newbies, you know, kind of all in the water together, enjoying ourselves. And you hear the candle blows. The three instructors will all look round. Oh, it's okay. They've got a buddy. So it's announcing not just to the buddy that I'm about to dive. So your buddy might be talking to somebody else. You know, oh, no, they're going to go down. They're going to do this, that, and the other. They hear the candle blows, and then they can put all their attention on you, or on the diver. But also other people around can can hear it. And as I say, you'll see uh, the the the, the um, seniors will always look round and go, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's okay. They've got a buddy. Yeah, so really, really powerful non-verbal communication. Um, in the pool, uh, we have non-verbal communication where we are telling people um, our intentions. So very, very simple. If we're playing something like uh, flatlining, uh, where there's a group of people swimming up and down and you take rests in the group of people, some people take rests, some people don't, you literally take the mask off uh, and it's saying, I'm having a rest. Uh, and it might only be rest for you know 20 seconds uh, but you take your mask off that's saying I'm, I'm having a rest the people who are about to dive they keep their mask on non-verbal communication everybody can look along the line um, and say okay they're, st they're going they're not going um, and and obviously you can keep your eyes closed mask on waiting for the candle blows from the from the uh, leading person again it, it's it's all it's all built into our training so that we don't have to kind of have a countdown every time uh, or, or you know kind of have somebody else controlling okay it's, it's already kind of built in um, and these nonverbal communications uh, take practice they all take practice um, they pr take practice for you to k keep an ear, ear open or an eye open for it and it takes practice for you to put it into your diving um, so you, you're you know, kind of aware and sure that other people have, have, have picked up on, on your communications. Practice, 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 practice. And this is why um, you know, we, we build it into the our no tech sessions and, and they're there. They're, they're already there, built in. So when we go out in the lake, you know, we, we already know, they know what they mean. Um, so the one that Tristan was asking about were the senior instructions um, and um, again these are very specific and take a lot of practice but he had seen us um, we had a swim through uh, we were in Cornwall the, the time that he was quoting we had a swim through and it was a beautiful Harry's Hull it is incredible it's uh, it depends on the tide somewhere between something like uh, you know, three meters to you know, nine meters or something like that depending on the tides deep um, uh, maybe 10 meters through but a massive cave and the light comes in it's beautiful um, and when it's dark and the light doesn't come in it's scary um, and you know we use this you know we go down to free fest we go down and we, we, we swim through Harris Hole um, it's it's the the hole is maybe two meters high, two meters wide, sandy bottom, and you know say so maybe maybe ten meters long. Um, so it's it's a, it's quite a quite a challenge for for newbies, uh, both physically because because of the depth and the, and the distance, but equally well mentally because it is underneath solid rock and sometimes the visibility is not fantastic. It, it, it's it's dark. I mean it's pitch black. Um, which is scary. So we have an instructor at the, uh, at the front and an instructor at the back, and we have to communicate, you know, what's happening. Okay? So some of the some of the people will be going through on their own. Some will be going through with an instructor, and some of them will be going through, and there might be somebody taking photographs. So all this information has to be communicated to the person at the other end of the swim through, and we're in the sea. 
we are well if the swim through is 10 meters we are you know 15 meters apart which is quite a distance um and we don't want to be shouting it, it, it instant ambiguity okay so you know very simple one person uh, and they're going down and we always count candle blows because there are three candle blows so um you know, watch this person um and they're going in three candle blows two candle blows one candle blow and away they go down okay. uh, so that's, um, and then that's it so the other person knows that there's one person coming through um, we don't count the instructor um, because uh, well rather we do count the instructor but we don't watch the instructor if that makes sense so there's two people going through and they're in um, three candle blows two candle blows one candle blow and they go uh, we're really concentrating, the safety will be concentrated on the, uh, you know, the student going through. Because um, the instructor may stay at the entrance to help them in or, or whatever. And they, yeah, kind of, the instructor's uh, obviously going to make sure they come out, but we're really concentrating our safety efforts on, on the newbie. Um, all our dives that we have uh, and it's it's fairly i can only talk about what we use but it's i think it's fairly uh, general where you'll have a countdown so if there's more than one person diving um like i said earlier if there's two people there there should be uh, two safety divers so that's four people so to coordinate that we have a soft countdown we call it a soft top um so you know we count a minute 30 seconds um 20 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 1. Uh, the diver doesn't have to go on zero, but they go around zero. And this gives us time for other people to, to do what they need to do. Um, you know, maybe a, a cameraman needs to go down before the diver. You know, so we give a decent countdown. So they might go 20 seconds before top. Um, so they need to know when, you know, when that is. Uh, but equally well, if um, somebody's asked to do, say, Harry's Hole, and I think, yeah, they are, yeah, I reckon they're good for it. Uh, they've seen it, but I've got to send an instructor to go with them. I'll say, okay, one minute. So I clearly tell them they've got one minute, and then I can go and speak to the instructor, knowing that that person is not going to, you know, just blow the candles and go. Uh, one minute. Okay, can you watch that diver go through, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and then and the count goes down to thirty seconds. Um. Um, we never count down on watches uh, because um, it gives us false information uh, in most cases in the fact that uh, you give a countdown if it's exactly 30 seconds, pff, countdown, um, and something happens and I'm at 10 seconds to top, I've got to say, I've got to tell somebody some information then that last 10 seconds or you know, last 20 seconds is going to be slightly wrong and this could really put somebody off. So we never use um, a, uh, a watch because then it's everybody's expecting a minute to be give or take a little bit, okay? Um, you know, and, and so everybody's already expecting it. It's never a shock. You know, you might be somewhere and you, you know, if you count down with a watch all the time and then one time you don't have a watch, then it's going to be slightly different. And if you're not ready for that, then that's going to just mess you, mess you up. So we always count down without a clock, so you count in your head. Uh, also gives you a lot more awareness about time. You start learning about, about how slow uh, seconds are. Um, of course, if you do count up with a watch, it's no problem. It, it's going to be perfect. So the diver is, you know, is, is okay with it being perfect. If they're used to it not being perfect, they're going to be okay with it being perfect. But if they're only used to it being perfect, then one day it's not perfect. Yeah, it's, it's real, really painful. So we don't count down with a, with a clock. Usually 30 seconds or one minute. Um, and then, and, and, yeah, we, we go with that. Okay, so I think pretty much they're, they're, the, they're the signals uh, that we use. So we've got ship to shore, uh, and they're obviously for safety. So you've got okay, um, end of dive, or, or yeah, distress, help. Uh, diver to safety, you should never be speaking to a safety. A safety diver's sole objective is to be looking at you and making sure you are safe. So there's no need to say, I'm okay, because they're like, yeah, I know that. That's what I'm here to see. Um, lots of nonverbal communication, but uh, fairly obvious uh, and fairly specific. Um, 
with no tanks our candle blows are king they we use them literally they'll be used i'll be doing a session uh, on a last thursday for instance we had 25 people in the water so that's 25 people each of them did uh, 10 dives 20 dives so that's 500 sets of candle blows every single one was heard by somebody at some point uh, so I'm on the side and I'll hear a candle blow kind of randomly. I go, why is that person doing a candle blow? Oh, it's a senior, they're going early, they're going late, etc., etc. Um, so, yeah, so in one pool session, there was uh, 500 individual uses of candle blows to communicate to people around them what they were doing. That's quite a lot of non-verbal communication. Of course, <coughs> um, there are senior communications which you will learn and need to practice if you... Uh, go up to the ranks to, to a senior diver and on top of that you have some fun signals so uh, these they're not so useful underwater because if somebody if because you uh, so limited with time just saying look over there and there's a shark people are going to see the shark but if you really feel you need to you can say shark over there okay uh, these are just scuba signs uh, so shark over there uh, i have actually used it from two boats but i don't know whether that's a free diving signal if you're on a boat and somebody else is in the boat and i've gone um uh we have uh how do, how do i do this on the on the screen turtle <laughs> uh trigger fish just classic um uh, scuba signals for different fish basically um so um look them up there are some funny ones out there, um, and and say usually with free diving you'd come up to the surface and say, "Hey, did you see that trigger fish?" As opposed to uh, trying to get somebody's uh, attention while the dive is happening and kind of point out something, um, you know, point it out as a trigger fish. You don't care. Just look over there, and they'll, they'll kind of see what you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's it. Thanks for joining me again or us and hopefully uh, I haven't had any messages through so hopefully a people were watching and um, B hope hopefully it was working so speak to you later see you next week cha -cha -cha -cha.